Hey guys, it's Kaylor. Welcome to the YouTube channel. In this Adobe XD tutorial, we're going to be creating a mobile landing page for a camera app. So we're also going to be creating the camera screen. So we're going to start with that app screen and then we're going to create the mobile landing section. So that's what we're going to be creating in today's tutorial. So you're going to want to download the project file. The link for the project file is down in the description. So it'll look something like this. On the left, we have the camera screen with its grid setup. And then we also have the mobile landing page grid setup with the four column grid. On the left, we're going to have all of the colors in here, the character styles and the symbols for this tutorial. So that's going to get you to the starting point for today's video. So make sure you download that. Today's video is sponsored by bookmark.com. Bookmark is a really cool and easy way to build a website in under two minutes. By answering seven simple questions, Bookmark uses an artificial intelligence to build your website right before your eyes. You can even create an online store if you have items to sell. So if you're looking to build a website, there's a link in the description down below for bookmark.com. So let's go ahead and start with the camera screen first. So I'm going to create a rectangle on the screen. That's going to be the full size of the artboard and I'm going to remove the border and this is going to house our image. So the camera app is going to be open and it's going to be actively about to take a picture. So we're going to have that right there. So I've dragged that in. I'll provide all the unsplash images that I'm using in a folder for you guys as well. So first we're going to have the lightning bolt icon. So I'll just drag that in and we're going to put this up here in the corner. I'm going to double click and I'm going to add a default shadow to this. So the default color of zero, 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 zero and zero on the X value, three on the Y and six on the blur. That's just going to make sure that if we're taking a picture of something white that stands out and so you can actually see it. Next, we're going to need the volume button. So I'm going to put this up here. So if you're taking a video, if you want the volume on or off, I'm going to have a profile icon in the center. So let's drag out a circle and we're going to set this to 36 pixels in diameter for the border. Let's set that to white and I'll drag in another image. So I'm going to drag in our profile icon and we're going to center this up with the artboard and then vertically it's going to be centered with the icons that we have here. So don't pay any attention to this line. Next, I'm going to put a little notification icon on this just for a little bit of detail. So I'm going to grab a circle, drag that out and I'm going to put that in the corner of the image. So right against that line and against that line, I'm going to remove the border and apply this red color that I have up here in the character styles. So like most cameras, we want to target the face of the model. So I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to grab a rectangle and I'm just going to drag out a rectangle and we'll remove the fill and on the border we'll apply a white border to that. So we're just going to kind of make sure that's masking around the face. And then I'm going to grab the line tool and I'm just going to add a little bit of detail on this. So I'm going to create a line that's 10 pixels tall and we're going to apply a white to the border of that as well. Then I'm going to put this to the center like that and then down here at the bottom. I'm going to flip that around, make sure it's 10 pixels wide and we'll do the same. So we'll just stick it over here just like that. So next I'm going to grab all of these holding shift and clicking on them individually and then once we have all that selected I'm going to hit command G to group it and reduce the opacity to about 50%. So next we need some kind of icon to take us to our library of photos. So I'm going to create a rectangle down here on the bottom of our margins and I'm going to make this 24 pixels, which is the same size as the icons we're using. Each one of them are in a 24 pixel square for spacing. On this, I'm going to set a border of white and that's going to be one pixel. I'm going to set a default shadow to this as well. And then on the border radius, we'll set that to five, just so we have a nice round on there. I'm going to drag the same image that we're using here in the background into this square. And then I'm going to hold alt on this and drag up to create a duplicate. And we'll put that 14 pixels above and I'm going to do that one more time. And on each one of these, I'm going to double click and adjust the mask. So it looks like they're different shots of the same person. So this would be kind of like 
all of the history. So as you're taking photos, it's gonna pop each one up here. And over time, they'll just kind of slowly fade away. It's kind of like a feed of the photos. And then this last one is the permanent one that stays here. I, I figured that would be a cool effect for this app. And then here in the bottom right corner, we need something to flip the camera around. So we'll drag that icon in here as well. And we'll put that down here in the corner. And we need to make sure that we apply a drop shadow to this one. And let's make sure we have a drop shadow on this one above as well. And we also need to select our user profile and add a default drop shadow to that. So everything now should have a drop shadow. So the last thing we need is a circle to take the picture. So I'm just going to grab the circle tool and drag out a circle holding shift. And we're gonna make this 70 pixels by 70 pixels. We're gonna remove the border. And again, I'm gonna line this up in the center vertically, and then horizontally, we're gonna line it up with these icons down here at the bottom. So not paying attention to the bottom grid line there. I'm gonna hit Command C, Command V to make a duplicate. I'm gonna apply a border of white to this. And on this one, I'm going to remove the fill. I'm also gonna set the border size to three pixels. And then I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift and drag out. And that's going to keep the aspect ratio the same for the circle. And it's also going to drag out from the center. So we're just gonna drag that out just like that to make our button. So that's pretty much it for this screen. So I'm just gonna select that and remove the grid layout. Now I'm gonna select the camera screen and hit Command E to export this as an image. All right, so now that we have our screen exported, I have a mock-up here. Here is the credits for this. This is actually from one of you guys that I met in the comments. Uh, so I'm gonna use the iPhone version of this and we just have to drag this image into the gray square for this mock-up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that camera image on in. And then I'm gonna select just the phone and export this with Command E once more. I'll provide a link in the description for that mock-up if you'd like to download it. I'm gonna drag that exported phone screen in and I'm gonna scale this down to about 340 pixels wide. And I'm gonna position this center horizontally and vertically we're gonna go all the way down until the roundness of the bottom of the phone cannot be seen. So it looks like it just goes straight off the screen. Here in the top of the browser, I'm gonna drag out a menu icon. And before we can see that, we're gonna to to set this gradient here in the background, which I have provided in the document. I'm gonna select fill, and I'm gonna drag the reddish orange swatch here into the corner. And this yellow swatch, I'm gonna drag way off so we have a nice orange here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. So this menu icon is gonna go here on the first column and we'll put that 50 pixels from the top of the artboard. Next, I'm gonna paste in a bit of text for the H1 and we're gonna set this to Proxima Nova, 30 size font and I'm gonna bump this up from medium to bold. And we're gonna set this to white and we'll center this up to the artboard and put it about 150, 160 pixels from the top of the artboard. Now we need a download button for this, so our call to action is complete. So I'm gonna drag out a rectangle that is two columns wide and 50 pixels high, and then we can just round these corners by dragging in that little circle icon, and we'll remove the fill, apply a border of white to this, and we'll bump that up to a two pixel sized border. Inside of this, I'm gonna type out download. And we're gonna set this text to 17 point proximate of a font, medium font weight. And we'll also set that to a white fill. Beside this, I'm gonna have an Apple logo since this app is only available on Apple. We're gonna drag that on in. And we'll center that up with the text and put about 10 spacing in between the two. With both of those selected, I'm gonna center it up inside of the button. So let's go ahead and turn off the grid. And for the last little detail, I'm gonna go down here and grab one of these images and just drag it over. So the idea is these images are gonna fall down here in the background of the app, like the users are actually taking these with the app currently. 
So we're just going to make this a little bit bigger and we'll just rotate it slightly and just copy and paste these around the screen. And then I'm gonna add some different images into these. Then I'm gonna select all of them, holding shift, command shift, left square and bracket key to send them all the way to the back and we'll put the opacity at 55%. And so with that, we are done with today's tutorial. That was creating a iPhone camera screen and a mobile landing page for a camera app in one tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more design related content. I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So make sure you have that notification bell on so you don't miss a video. And as always, have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next one.